Hey, this is the Level Up Engineering Podcast, where we talk with some of the most successful tech leaders who reveal actionable management insights that help you take your developer team to the next level. This episode was brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications with Angular and Node.js. Check them out at CodingSans.com. Welcome to today's episode of Level Up Engineering, where we talk with leaders in the tech industry. I am your host, Carolina Toth. Our guest today is Tom Bartel, lead developer at Trivago. Welcome, Tom. Hello. We are glad you could join us. Please tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Hey, my name is Tom. I am an engineering manager at Trivago. I studied computer science in the classical way. I was always interested in computer programming, especially web development. So that's what I did for some time. And at some point, I had the opportunity to move into a bit more of a management role. So I did that for a lot. Then I changed back into an individual contributor role again. So I did software development again. And now I'm leading a small team of five people. And I like this kind of position a lot. Today, we will talk about a topic um, that's relevant to all of us, be it the tech industry or anywhere else. And it's handling conflicts and providing feedback. So let's jump right in and start with um, conflict resolution. What are some of the possible conflicts within an engineering team? There are conflicts about the subject matter. So engineers might be of different opinion about the right way to solve a certain problem, which technology to use, which approaches to go forward. And these are the more easy ones. And then there are also interpersonal conflicts. I mean, engineers claim to be rational and all, and to a degree they are, but they are still humans. and. Humans come with emotions, and that can cause conflicts. Sometimes people um, are criticized or that their work is criticized, and they don't, don't take it very well, so they develop some bad feelings over time, or they just don't get along that well on a certain level. Somebody is annoyed by somebody else's behavior, and all of these kinds of things can lead to conflict. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, do you think it's needed to step in? How would you step in? And how can these conflicts be resolved? <clears throat> yeah, it's necessary at some point to step in. You shouldn't step in whenever some little thing happens. I mean, you're not their parent and they are not children. They are grown up people and you can expect a certain professionalism in their behavior. But if the team atmosphere is threatened and if the output, the productivity of the team is threatened, then at the latest, it's time to step in and take them aside. So talk to people, not individually, I wouldn't do that so much, but get them in the same room and talk things over. Everybody needs to be heard. But if you take them individually aside, then person A tells you this, person B tells you that. So you don't quite know which is the truth. The truth might be somewhere in between, but it's very hard to resolve conflicts this way. So usually it's the best thing to get everybody in the same room and talk things over. You make it sound so easy. So Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> So um, do you think a tech lead should prevent conflicts or what are some steps that you can take to prevent these, these conflicts? Preventing conflicts, I don't think it's always possible. So the best thing, the closest you can come probably is to have an open team atmosphere where everybody feels safe. So foster a uh, a culture of communication, of open communication in your team. You can do that by setting an example in your team meetings. It's always good to talk to everybody one-on-one -on, -one, on a regular basis so they get a chance to speak up because some people bottle things up for a long time and they think, ah, it's not worth talking about that. I don't want to make a big fuss. But 
then at some point it becomes too big yeah if they let it fester and it, it grows inside of them if they don't ever get it out then at some point it can be too late so if you have this culture of open communication in the team that's a, a good first step you will still not be able to prevent all conflicts and the second best thing is to diagnose it early to recognize early that something is going on something's wrong because the earlier you can catch something the easier it will be to resolve and the less damage will be done of course mm -hmm. could you give us an example of of a conflict you've resolved I remember a situation when a new developer was joining a team, a team of rather senior developers. And uh, the new guy was rather junior, not just in skill level, but also in age. So he was a couple of years younger than the rest. The developers who had already been on the team, they were very used to each other and they worked very well together. And the new guy didn't integrate very well it was partly his fault maybe partly the the group's fault but he also did a couple of things he he joked around a lot sometimes in ways that would annoy the other guys and didn't take the learning opportunities he got seriously enough so when his first uh, round of feedback came it was pretty bad and okay. he he didn't expect that and he was devastated. So it, it was obvious that there was a, a rift going through this team with the three existing engineers on the one side and the new guy on the other side. And it was not a healthy situation. So I did what I talked about earlier. I got them all in the same room. And we had a, a bit of a, a painful, awkward conversation, but a, a very healthy conversation in the end because everybody got to name what they didn't like about the situation about certain behaviors about certain situations and it resolved some misunderstandings because some things were not really problems but rather misunderstandings and it improved the situation i also took the new engineer aside in an individual one-on-one -on -one conversation i made my expectations clear that he has to stop certain kinds of behavior that he has to to take some things more seriously and that's what he did and he really surprised me he turned around quite a lot he improved the situation he applied himself and the situation improved dramatically and also the team that had been before they opened up more and they made an active effort to integrate him more take him to lunch together and things like that so the team became a team again and for some time it, it really hadn't been a team wow that's it sounds like a really great example it doesn't always go that well so i, I picked uh, an example with a happy end but there are also examples where it doesn't go that well. Yes, Not always are people able to turn around like that. He was still very young at that point. I think that helped. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't always work like that, for sure. So let's talk more about feedback. Why should this topic be important to our listeners? I think it's hugely important. Um, I think we all need feedback. The world we live in is super complex and you can never perceive everything that's going on around you and you have some blind spots about yourself and you don't kn always know what is the effect that your your behavior and your actions have on others so you have to have feedback otherwise there is no development or you're flying blind everybody needs feedback what steps are important when giving feedback to someone on your team or an employee well a ground rule is that feedback should be timely. Um, it should be about something that happened recently, ideally on the same day or the next day, but should be the same week or so, because after that it becomes pointless in a way. The, the other person might not remember the situation, so then it's hard to explain your point. So feedback should be about 
concrete things that happened. Don't generalize. Like, I think you should be more polite. It's very hard to put into action because the, the person doesn't really know what you mean. So as concrete as possible so that the other person can put it into action, should be actionable. If it's critical feedback, I think it's best given in a one-on-one -on -one setting behind a closed door. So not in front of other people, because if you criticize somebody in front of other people, they might be afraid of losing face. They start defending themselves and then they close down. They are not open to the feedback and your feedback doesn't have any effect in the end. Mm -hmm. What is the best way, in your opinion, to give feedback to help people improve? Give them concrete pointers in which they can develop. In general, I think people should be able to use their strengths at work. So if you see them using their strengths, also praise them for it. If you see them doing a good job, praise them, give them acknowledgement so that they, they keep doing this and they make even more effort in using their strengths at work, because that's where the, the most potential lies. If you only ever criticize and try to fix people's weaknesses, they will lose confidence in the end because they constantly have the feeling, oh, I'm doing something wrong, I'm doing something wrong, I have to be careful. You don't want this kind of, of atmosphere. If all they ever do is try to avoid mistakes, then they will not do great things in the end. I agree with you. So. Um... What are the main rules for giving feedback? How do you make sure that your feedback is valid? I use concrete examples. I try to give timely feedback. And I think it's also important to listen, to ask for the person's perspective, ask why a certain behavior is there, why they said certain things or, or why they, they became angry at this point or something. If you just tell them uh, this has to stop, do it differently, then okay, maybe they do it, but they might not fully buy into it. It's better if something also comes from them. So ask them, what will you do differently? What do you suggest resolving the situation or avoiding the situation in the future? And if the ideas come from them, themselves, then they will also have more buy-in and they will be more committed to changing their behavior in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have touched on this a little bit, but how do you differentiate yourself when you give positive or negative feedback? How do you approach the subject? Under what circumstances do you give it? And so on. I think positive feedback can be given in pretty much any situation, but it always depends on the recipient also. Some people get embarrassed when they get praised in public. They don't really like being the center of attention, being in the limelight. So if you know that, then you can, of course, and you should adapt your style of giving feedback to the recipient. If they prefer a quiet setting for receiving feedback, even if it's praise, then respect that and give it in a private setting. Critical feedback, as I touched upon earlier, should be given in a private setting, usually, so that people are more open. It's a safe environment. Nobody is watching. Nobody is listening. They will be more open to accepting the feedback in the first place. Sometimes I see people, if they have a piece of critical feedback, they go, ah, nice job on this feature, by the way. Um, but you, in your code review comments, you have a bit of a hostile tone. Uh, I would like this to change. But really, great job on the feature. So they, they sugarcoat a little bit the, the critical feedback. They start with something positive. Then they deliver the actual message, what they want to, to deliver. And then they end with something positive again. This Sometimes it's called the shit sandwich. It's, I call it sugar coating. And generally, I think it should be avoided because it, it dilutes the message. It waters it down. 
And a lot of people will actually not get it then. If you have a piece of critical feedback, just get it out. If you have a lot of critical things to say, maybe start with one. Pick the one that's most important to you that would give the most uh, benefit if it was followed and keep it to one for this time. Yeah. Also, don't overwhelm people. If you have three, four, five pieces of critical feedback, the, the other person might get overwhelmed and at some point just shut down. They will think, oh, I'm doing nothing right. Everything's wrong. I'm, I'm such a failure. This is also not what you want because then there will be discouragement, there will be no action and there will be no improvement. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other mistakes that you've seen engineering managers make? Besides the sugar coating, I see sometimes a, a lot of people ask, how can we improve the situation? So if you're the manager and you see some misbehavior in one of your people, asking how can we change that? Uh, hey, I saw in, in the meeting this morning and also yesterday you interrupted Sarah and you talked over Jack. There's a certain pattern. How can we improve the situation? But it doesn't have anything to do with you. And if you say, how can we improve the situation? It suggests to your direct report that you're part of the problem and you also have responsibility for fixing it but you don't. It's not your problem. It's not your mistake. It's their mistake. It's their problem. So you should also make clear the expectation that it's their job to improve it, to fix it. So don't say we, but say, what do you suggest to improve the situation? Mm -hmm. I think we have covered quite a few areas of giving critical feedback and handling conflicts. A few things that really struck me as a key takeaways is um, being very direct and honest about what you have to say and also being timely and giving people the privacy that they would appreciate. Is there anything that we haven't touched on today? Well, if you give feedback a lot, you should also know how to receive feedback. As a, in, in a leading position, in a managing position, some people will not dare to give you honest feedback and open feedback. So you have to make a double effort to get that. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get that, you will develop more and more blind spots or lose touch with what it's like as an individual contributor. And there will be more and more distance between you and your people. And that's not a good thing. So whenever somebody comes out and gives you critical feedback, thank them for it because feedback is a gift, but it also has to be accepted. So there's also a responsibility on the receiving end to accept the feedback, think about it. Even if you don't agree with it, tell the, the person, okay, I have to think about this. I I don't have an answer right now, or I don't want to, to go into it right now, but thank you for the feedback. I will think about it. So they at least know that you take them seriously and that it's important to you and that they will keep doing it in the future. Even if you might not agree with the feedback right away, it's a, a data point. Yeah? Everybody's perception is different. There's a lot of subjective feelings in human behavior and human interactions. So take it as a data point. Even if you don't agree with it, maybe somebody else says the same thing to you next week or a month later, and then maybe you start seeing a pattern and you become more observant about yourself and start seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you don't only have a great responsibility when you give feedback, but also when you receive feedback. So, Nobody ever has the full picture, even about your own behavior. Feedback from others makes this picture a bit more complete. And that's why we all need that. Right. That's amazing advice. What would you say to our listeners? How should a lead developer such as yourself encourage other developers to give him feedback or her? I think they should try to create a safe atmosphere in their team 
for example, there are some exercises where everybody has to show a bit of vulnerability. For example, talk about the most important thing they had to cope with while they were growing up or openly admit mistakes yourself so that others will do the same. And I think this is the basis for giving feedback to each other because then everybody sees it's okay to not always be perfect and not always be strong, but it's okay to always to also show some vulnerability and some weakness once in a while. And that's a very good basis for receiving critical feedback. Thank you very much. For our listeners, where could we find you to follow your work or, or to learn more about your work? Well, I blog at tombartle.me. So I don't write every week or so, but rather once in a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe you find something you find interesting. I write mainly about engineering management, communication, things like giving feedback or creating psychological uh, safety in your environment. And have a look. Awesome. Today, our guest was Tom Bartel, lead developer at Trivago. You should check out his blog at tombartel.me. And he writes some really interesting blog posts. So go ahead and learn more about his work. Thanks for joining us, Tom. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. To our listeners, I am hoping that you got to take away meaningful insight. Thanks for joining us. I am Carolina Toth, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for staying with Level Up Engineering. If you enjoyed this podcast, so will your friends. Share this episode on your favorite social networking platform. To stay up to date with our content, follow Level Up Engineering on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or Google Podcast. Brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications with Angular and Node.js. Check them out at CodingSans.com.